Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the State of Water project. Uh, one of our first ones that really uses nested loops, but also using our string testing. Uh, project itself is pretty straightforward, so I'm going to give you a scale of temperatures and I'm going to give you a random value. I've given you the, mo the boiling or the vaporization points, I've given you the melting or the freezing points, and you just have to figure out which state of matter it is, solid, liquid, or gas. Now the numbers are kind of wildly different. There's not a lot of ways we could easily divide those up. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna divide them by their scale and then we'll just split them into whichever uh, state of matter they are. Uh, there are some other combinations you can do to get this, but that's gonna be really the most straightforward. Down below, I've got you three sample examples just so you can try it out. So. 350.25 degrees Kelvin is a liquid, 110 degrees Celsius is a gas. So obviously we do need to deal with a double and then we're testing for string values, okay? So I've got my skeleton set up. I've got my scanner built in so the users can respond to it. And uh, I'm gonna use it to mirror what's going on. So there is my stuff. Enter temperature. And then I'm going to build in a couple of spaces so that it will print on that same line. Now I need to make my variables. So the first one will be a double. We'll just call it temp for temperature. And console.next double. Um, more than likely, when I'm walking around, I used uh, integers just to keep things simple, but it does specify double, so we need to make sure we allow for that. Next one. Enter uh, the scale. And I think before here, because even I mess up these sometimes. Fahrenheit, Celsius, Kelvin. Okay, enter the temperature scale will work. Okay, and then one, two, that's a print line, we're good there. So I'll grab a string and we'll try to call this the scale. Now, a lot of people have been setting off the string glitch by using next line here. There's nothing that says you can't, but if you do, you've triggered the string glitch. So you need to have to come back up here and just clear the buffers if you do that, okay? So nothing wrong with it. Just be aware that that's what you have to do. I am gonna assume the users will only type one word, so I'm gonna leave it like this. And that's it. That's my questions. That's all the user sees. Okay. Make sure one last time. Enter the scale. Yeah. Okay. So the state at temperature degrees scale is. Okay. So now we're ready for our if tests. So the first one I'm going to do is nested. So if using strings, I can't use the double equals. I have to use the method, so dot equals. So if scale dot equals, ignore case, and remember I use that so I can avoid the capitalization issues, uh, F-A-H-R-E-N, A-G-I-T, Fahrenheit, okay? Then I open my curly brackets because I've got other things I wanna test once I get in there, okay? So I refer back to my scales. So Fahrenheit, I just one line. Okay, 32 and 212. All right, so if temperature is less than 32, okay, I'm going to concatenate this, but I'm going to steal it so that I can use what I need to. Okay. So here's where I break first to put the temperature. And this 
is where I put scale. And then state of matter. So since I'm below 32, that would make this part a solid. Now that I've got it, let's not just a bit. Okay. All right, so if I'm above 212 degrees, then I'm in a gas. And if I'm in between, let's see, so greater than or equal to 32, and temp is less than or equal to 212, then it is a liquid. Okay, so there is one way of doing those. So if test and then lots of ifs in between. Remember that the risk with that, however, is that it's going to check every single one of them. I'm fairly certain I did it right, but let me show you another option. So this one could be Celsius. Okay, Celsius, just to confirm, 100 degrees and zero. So its low end is zero. To be a solid, its high end is 100. Okay, so here's the exact same thing we did up above. If we were to replicate that kind, but let me show you some tricks. Because I made it inside for Celsius, I know I need to print something, so I can link these together. Okay, if I want to. Um, I can use another else if here, but here's what I can do. Since I've already eliminated solids and gases, I can just make an else statement, which is my catch all. Okay. So that works as well. Same thing goes with these outer statements, but since they're just testing the string, I'm going to leave them as ifs. Okay. Now I've got one other thing I can do with those, and that's for those of you who don't like to do nesting. Again, it's a very useful thing, but I know some of you are still warming up to it. So let me show you the alternative. So you can compound your tests. So the last one we have is Kelvin. And okay, Kelvin is 373 and 273. Okay, temp is less than 273. So if that's the case, then I am a solid. Okay. Um, if it's greater than 373. Okay equal and less than B. this one is a gas Okay, so here is the code. It works in all three forms. It's okay. Do not think you have to mix and match. This is to show you guys options, but any of these methods will work. So let's check their sample codes and we'll run our code. Okay, 350.25 Kelvin. 350.25. Kelvin, okay, liquid, we're good there. Run it again. 110 Celsius is a gas. 110 Celsius is 
to gas, good. And the last one, 165 Fahrenheit. Oh, uh, it grabbed it, but I'll do it properly. There you go. Is this liquid? Okay. So again, there are options available, but start making some decisions. Okay. It's okay if you're still, if you still flip from time to time, but make a choice. So these are all ifs. There's nothing wrong with them. The only hang up is that if your test is wrong, you have the risk of running multiple values because each if is tested every time. Down here, I've got some if else's, so those are at least linked together, which means only one of these will print. Okay. Also, when I have multiple tests, if I get to the very end and, I'll, and everything else just has to be, I can just use else, which is a catch-all. And then some of you like having all the control where everything is a compound test. So just be careful. The longer, more complex you make these tests, the easier it is to make a mistake. Okay. Hope these help you. Uh, state of water. Have a great one.